We've come to Los Angeles, California. We're at uh, what is known as the Wilshire District, and we're talking to Paula Winslow, who perhaps is best known to radio fans for her performance uh, as the long-suffering wife, Peg, uh, the wife of Chester Riley on The Life of Riley, but I know you've done so many things. Thank you for having us uh, visit <laughs> I'm you today. I'm delighted to have you. It's a very great pleasure to talk with you. You did an awful lot of work. Yes. During radio days, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. Where did it start for you? I always like to ask people, where did it start? We go way back. Well, so far um, back. I went to New York and um, studied drama for a year with a lady called Marta Oatman. And I met uh, Charles Carroll, who was, uh, he's gone now, but he was a very fine actor. And when I came back, I got into radio, really through his suggestion. I didn't have any intention of going to radio. I was going to do some stage work. But I started, the first thing I ever did was a show with um, Mrs. Wallace Reed. You remember the famous um, movie star Wallace Wallace Reed Reed Mm -hmm. actor? And she had a little show, uh, which I, that was the very first thing. Then I went to... This was New York? This was in New York? No, this was all in Los Angeles. Yes. This was well, now, how did you, whoa, how did you I get from... I went to New York and then yeah. returned to Los Angeles. Oh, you're originally from... Los Angeles. Los Angeles, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. But you felt the stage... But, uh, yes, but I, York, I yeah. always planned on um, going on the stage, mm-hmm. but uh, I never did. I, always, I ended up in radio so busy <laughs> that I never got anywhere else. So, um, then I went on to uh, do a lot of shows at the old... KHJ studio. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that when you've talked with some of the people, you remember oh, how KHJ active was that was. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And um, did a number of shows down there. Mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, we uh, who were in radio at that time did the first of the transcontinental shows that uh, from emanated east from, from KHJ. West to east, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. From mm-hmm. east, from west to east. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Woodbury Hollywood, Woodbury show with uh, Bing Crosby. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think Luella Parsons had a show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we also did a show with, um, oh, my memory is failing me, uh, uh, Alexander Wolcott. Did the, the town shows crier. with him, he was yeah, yeah. The town. Mm-hmm. and then uh, we did an awfully good show called Mobile Magazine, which was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something like the March of Time, but that was that was an interesting mm-hmm. show. So uh, before old KHJ was no longer a, a, a good studio, uh, and they moved to the big new CBS. Mm-hmm. Why uh, we had already begun to do some of the transcontinental shows. But then they moved, they built the new studios on the Sunset mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and all the Which shows. Was and then Columbia all the Square, I think. Yeah, they that it was. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So you, uh, you were freelancing right from the beginning or yes. were you on staff? At no, I, I was always freelancing. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't. I think maybe one or two people might have had a contract, but mm-hmm. uh, most of us were freelance. However, I did many shows. For several years, mm-hmm. I was constantly mm-hmm. on them. I did um, Hollywood Hotel. You remember that? Oh, sure. I was on that for five mm-hmm. years. Uh, In various I, roles. Various roles. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, supporting. Well, we would support the stars mm-hmm. that they would have. For instance, the Betty Davis uh, did Dark Victory. Mm-hmm. I did the part that. Uh, uh, Geraldine Fitzgerald did in the picture, you know, the second yeah. lead. Uh-huh. And then sometimes we'd do a lead opposite one of the stars. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, then, uh, whatever. You it just to... went on and on with, the, yeah, with that, all of those mm-hmm. things. Well, the first, uh, I was going to say the first big time role, but there you were with, uh, with mm-hmm. uh, Hollywood Hotel. Was, well, uh, that was uh, the first time that you might have said I had, mm-hmm. like, uh, co-starring mm-hmm. uh, that my name was known a little bit were you but getting on the air credit uh, oh yes. at that time yes because uh-huh. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I know in some of those earlier yes. days they, uh, they no. were reluctant to give uh, oh, air well, credit to the performance reluctant not only to give credit but to give money you know we started <laughs> for five dollars mm-hmm. a show and uh, Frank Nelson and I did um, Witch's Tales which was an awfully mm-hmm. good show mm-hmm. and um, Everybody in Hollywood was kind of jealous of us because you got $10. <laughs> and but then we got $25 on Hollywood Hotel. So, of course, that was a big-time show. But for the $25, uh, 
What did you have to do? There's well, twenty-five dollars, you were theirs, you yeah. know, for the week practically. <laughs> and Bill Bacher, believe me, mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, he was a mm -hmm. ringleader, and uh, we were there when we were called. How much and rehearsal was required for, for well, the Hollywood Hotel, we were, for example? We rehearsed quite a lot for Hollywood Hotel. We would go very often in the morning at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't get through till 4 or 5 in the afternoon. This was before, you see, um, AFTRA, mm -hmm. before we had uh, a union, mm -hmm. so that there was unlimited uh, rehearsal time. But during the run of Hollywood Hotel, we began to have the union. Then we, AFRA was started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then things were a little bit better because our, our rehearsal time was limited. And they said that you had to get so much money and, and you there, couldn't do that's three right. and four and five that's right. different roles on a show. That's right. You couldn't do four mm -hmm. or five roles as sometimes we did. Did you do many doubling yes, like that? Did you I do did. much of that? Mm -hmm. Different type of voice? Yes. You did many Yes, I did everything from... from Babies to Claudette Colbert's grandmother. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I was, you know, young, I was in my twenties. Mm -hmm. Did you do a baby cry? Is that, were you one of the I criers? Did. I, I <coughs> wasn't. The, the best baby crier was a Mary Lansing. Uh huh. She was an awfully good baby crier. Some of us did. I did. I have done it, but I wasn't. But she was the. There were people who were sort of known for things, and mm -hmm. Mary was the best baby crier. She was marvelous. A lot of people, I think, in, in, the, in the radio business, and I suppose in, in screen work and even TV, uh, they get, I guess the word is typecast, but it, yes. maybe not. But they're known for these kind mm -hmm. of certain roles, and they'd say, well, that's, that's true. you're one of the dependables, so we call them yeah, and, and uh, right. do this uh, sort of thing. Well, I was very fortunate in, um, forgive me, you know, for saying, quite versatile. That's good. And no. I did a lot of accents. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to do uh, many ages in my mm -hmm. voice, even mm -hmm. when I was just a young girl. So I really had an awfully good time. I well, did a lot on a Big Town, for instance, mm -hmm. with Edward Robinson. I did all kinds of interesting roles. You spent a lot of time working with Robinson on Big Town? Yeah, I worked five town? years on uh, oh, Big Town. Yeah. Well, and I worked a number of years on Silver Theater. Mm -hmm. I, my claim to fame is that Clark Gable asked for me to be his leading lady. Oh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> and what, and two or three on, times. On Silver Theater? Or yes, other, other on Silver part? Theater. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I was very thrilled. That's pretty good. <laughs> yes, it was pretty good. <laughs> and was he really a lady killer? He was a very nice man. He never made any kind of overtures to anybody. Mm -hmm. He was just a big, good, kind of a man's man, you mm -hmm. know. No, mm -hmm. he was and very nice. And kept... You know, very nice, not uh, an actory kind of man at all. Everybody liked him, you know, men and women. Was him. he comfortable with radio? Uh, he seemed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them were quite nervous. Yeah, well, you, know, you must very have done uh, a number of Lux Radio Theater broadcasts uh, oh, yes. over the and years. A lot of them. And I understand that uh, many times the big movie stars who would come in to perform on the show, uh, along with the whole cast of radio people, the, the movie stars were very uncomfortable or really nervous about doing oh, that. They were, oh, they were terribly nervous, mm -hmm. some of them. Terribly. Um, I did a show one time with Rex Harrison, you know, this mm -hmm. marvelous, elegant man who was so experienced. I was just, literally, the paper just shaking, just, <laughs> just shaking. In his head. Yes, many of them were very good. Well, some of the people were absolutely marvelous. When uh, visually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but some of them were not uh, all. Some of them were not stage trained, mm -hmm. and were uncomfortable when they had only the voice to work with. Now that's understandable. And they were probably uh, unaccustomed to facing a, a studio audience of two or three hundred people. Well, looking at them and, and reading lines mm -hmm. into a metal thing hanging down. <laughs> and on the screen, they were marvelous mm -hmm. and so effective. And uh, it's, I can understand that. It, it, it's, it was a very uh, mechanical kind of thing. You mm -hmm. had to learn how to use that mic. And we all got used to that. The mm -hmm. ones who started, as you can understand, it's like a child learning and and from scratch mm -hmm. and so it never bothered us we would emote you know to this thing this piece of metal hanging down uh -huh. and never felt uh, 
self kind. I, you know, Ben Hall Taylor. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He wrote a book. You know, mm-hmm. he, wrote, he wrote in about <clears throat> showing how unconscious we were about anything except just our voice and doing the lines. I was very pregnant with my son, and finally. Instead of, I was, this was on Silver Theater, and mm-hmm. I worked mm-hmm. regularly. I was on every week. So finally, Glenn Hall said, uh, you know, you're looking a little bit um, pregnant, so I think maybe we better just, just let you do the commercial. So I said, oh, I'm so glad to get the money, you know, be on the show. So it was for Silver, uh, uh, International Silver, or one mm-hmm. of the Silver companies. And we never thought anything about it. I... Got up to the microphone. In front of a studio audience. Right in front of a big studio audience, Mm -hmm. big CBS studio. And I had a line that says, It's lovely, and yet it's a bit frightening. Tomorrow I'm going to be Mrs. Anderson. And somebody (laughs) in the audience went, (laughs) And you could just hear this. And Glenn Hall in the glass booth fell right down on the floor, just hid right behind the I never thought a thing about it at all. And I kept my poise, of course, and went on to the end with this commercial. But that was the end, needless to say, of my theory. From then on, they put me behind the curtain. But that was funny. That was really funny. Now, the commercials, you, know, you just mentioned, they put you behind the curtain. The commercials were often done yes, away Lux, from the Lux, studio. Uh, audience, Lux, right? they did. Uh, mm-hmm. They were always done off the stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, 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 that sense. was interesting. The studio audience didn't... They may have heard that, yes. but they didn't get but, to uh, see But many the of them were also done right in front of the audience. Mm-hmm. They would mm-hmm. just stop, you know, the music, and then they would come uh-huh. and do, do the, They did that on The Life of Riley. Mm-hmm. The girls would read the uh, commercials, or the men, right on the stage. Well, let, let's talk about The Life of Riley, since that okay. was really... Uh, you were on that show virtually from the beginning, mm-hmm. weren't you? I think it was around eight years that we yeah. did the that. The whole thing. It really was... One of the best comedy shows on on radio, and it uh, it uh, week after week uh, provided great uh, entertainment for those who who tuned in. And uh, William Bendix uh, was basically uh, Riley right off the bat. Now, what kind of a guy was he to work with? Well, uh, the reason that he uh, the show was so good is that he was also stage trained, so he mm-hmm. knew how to get a lot of fun out of the voice Mm -hmm. as well as from his uh, his face he looked like Riley because they later did it in television Mm -hmm. but none of us were given the television show they changed the whole cast but he was very good with his he was funny Mm -hmm. vocally very funny and um, oh I I just loved him he he and I just got along beautifully and uh, his wife was such a nice woman. He was very, very friendly with all of us. Mm-hmm. Entertained us at his home oh, that's so nice. many times, mm-hmm. and uh, very good, very professional. Now and, you uh, played Peg, his his wife, yeah. on the show. How did that come about? How did how did you get that job? I auditioned mm-hmm. for it. Uh, Irving it. Brecker was the one who the um, uh, did the, created the show mm-hmm. and then owned it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I auditioned for it. Did they have like an open yes. hall for oh, that? Yes. And they, there were many you know, others? A number of people, yes. And did, they they ever, uh, did they ever say to you why you got that over other people? What was, what was it about your, your no. voice or your, your uh, acting ability that... Uh, no, uh, they, just, uh, they just they uh, just still liked the way uh, I was able to uh, to read with Bill. You know, mm-hmm. we sort of did well together. There just, was w- just lucky, just one of those things. <laughs> yeah. There was a great in- a great interpretation of that role that you did because uh, at once you had to be, you know, you were Riley's loving wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were also tolerant of the shenanigans that he would get involved in. You were intolerant of many of the things that he did. Well, he could be exasperated. Yeah. <laughs> and, and in so many cases, they would do a, a flashback to when uh, Peg and Chester uh, first met or <laughs> went on a date or had the baby, and, uh, Junior or uh, uh, Babs. Bad. And it was interesting how the two of you, you and Ry- uh, uh, Bendix, would, I guess you would just lighten your voices to, to shave off the years, the years yeah. uh, and, and go through it. It was, it was marvelous. Yeah. You did a wonderful job um, with, uh, 
with all of that. He had fun doing that show, didn't he? Oh, you? yes. Oh, yes. Uh, we all worked together, and they had an awfully, awfully good cast. You know, John Brown. Mm -hmm. John Brown really was a, uh, uh, one of the great uh, second bananas, I guess yes, you might he was, say. He, was he did very so good much, and he very doubled on this show. He yeah, did uh, Gillis. Yeah, he did Gillis, and, and then he did the, the Undertaker. The Undertaker. TV Odell. Yeah. What kind of a guy was John Brown? Well, he was a very interesting uh, uh, man, mm -hmm. very experienced, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, he also was uh, uh, thoroughly professional. Mm -hmm. You know, to work. Uh, we didn't over uh, rehearse on that show mm -hmm. because everybody was so good. He was he was very interesting, very. Uh, How often we weren't as close as as some of the mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't as well, I you was with self, Bill. You may have played uh, op, uh, some scenes with Gillis. Rarely would you play a scene with no with the, Brown as uh, Digby. Mm -hmm. That Digby was just a little yeah. And he no, was so he was popular on that. She was, yes, that was a great he? minute and a half. Or well, whatever. that was a, the, a really a wonderful character that he created. I how, thought it was how that came about, I don't know, but it was perfect. Either. Because if you, if you were to think about an undertaker, I mean, <laughs> you can't perfect. imagine that an undertaker would be funny on a, on a no. radio show. And he was the only one in all those uh, and it's so different, you know, absolutely mm -hmm. different from Gillis. Oh, yeah. Uh, just yeah. amazing that. How much right. you talked about the uh, little rehearsal? What kind of rehearsal time? Did we you rehearsed. Have to do for that? I, as far as you know, I'm so getting along in years, as they say. And sometimes I, it's, it's, it's so long ago that it's hard for me to remember. But I remember. I think we only rehearsed uh, mm -hmm. the night before for you know a few hours, mm -hmm. not not terribly long, and then came back uh, to the studio early the next day and. Went through and did with the orchestra and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was really only two days that we did that. And um, we seldom had any difficulty at all. Did you, uh, did you have to do two shows? One for the repeat uh, broadcast for a while? Oh, gee. You know, because the time, yeah, uh, time differences. We did two. Oh, heavens above. I can't re I, Yes, I guess we did mm -hmm. do two shows mm -hmm. uh, on Riley. Because um, isn't that awful? all the time difference? All those years, I did so many shows. Well, with yeah, so right. many shows that did one show, and so many shows that did two shows. Mm -hmm. But um, I believe we did do two shows. When you were doing the, the Life of Riley, were you also working in other shows at that time? Yes. Or were you, you did? Yeah, I didn't have an exclusive uh, mm -hmm. contract. You didn't I was have able to, but uh, I didn't do too awfully too many mm -hmm. other things because. Did you have? But I was still working. I still worked, for instance, like Lux. Mm -hmm. You were the other. You things. could do some of the Lux. Mm -hmm. Lux was one of those shows that really would almost demand a tremendous amount of time in a, in a week. Yes, right? they had quite a lot of rehearsal mm -hmm. on that, and um, uh, see, it was an hour show too, a mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. show. But all these others were only half hours, and um, Lux was was a long, quite a long rehearsal mm -hmm. time. Took it a was lot a of prestigious time. program, yeah. and they, uh, yes, it was. Yeah. Now, now that was big Sunday show, you know. Yeah. Monday night. Lux was Monday night. Monday night. Later. Yeah. <laughs> and um, but I mean, we, we, mm -hmm. seems to me we rehearsed on on Sunday sometimes. You know. Oh yeah. And, well, I know we did. Yes. Yeah, did rehearsal. We rehearsed mm -hmm. Sunday uh, during the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did did uh, on Riley? Did you have? A, you, you said you didn't have an exclusive contract, but you did have a contract. Was it a year-to-year -year contract, or was yes. it a mm -hmm. run-of-the-show yes. kind of thing? Yes, and year a certain year. amount of money agreed mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You smile with that, so you must have gotten nicely paid for doing well, that. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. more, believe me, yeah. more so than some of the others. But as I said, by that time, of course, mm -hmm. um, we were all in a little better situation mm -hmm. with the uh, mm -hmm. union. Did you uh, have any other recurring roles on other broadcasts? Uh, for a while, I did on um, Big Town. I did mm -hmm. um, um, his secretary, Miss Foster. Mm -hmm. But uh, then he kind of liked the roles that I did. I was able to do the uh, character things, you know, and the mm -hmm. other things. So I didn't do that for very long. Uh, someone else took that uh, part over, and then I began to do mm -hmm. the uh, odds and ends of mm -hmm. the character, mm -hmm. which I really liked much better. You did 
uh, I believe some suspense programs, oh, yeah. some other really yeah. good mystery yeah. things and I stuff. Like um, if your wife wouldn't mind, right over there on the top of that book there on the top mm -hmm. is a list of some of the shows that I... Oh, that's my old... That's the scrapbook. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that's a, the, oh, there's I some see. interesting pictures in there, too, you might oh, enjoy well, looking so at you, later you on. You were in uh, Calling All Cars and uh, did Art Showbors? Was that... Uh, now that I did a regular part mm -hmm. on that, I played the um, girl and uh, uh, then the soprano. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, charming mm -hmm. woman! I can't remember her name. And you did uh, occasional what you worked that, with. That that I did a, a running part mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. That was with Charlie Winninger. Remember? Oh yeah, the um, was that Showboat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. At uh, Captain Henry. Yeah. Cap yeah. <laughs> Captain he he Henry. did that on the air. Yeah. And you worked with. Uh, the comedians, Jack Benny and Bob Hope, yeah. and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Fibber McGee and Molly, too. Oh, yeah. I worked a lot on the, um, Fibber McGee and Molly, and quite a lot on The Great Gildersleeve. Oh, yeah. Now, in various roles? Or yes. I had one little part that I would reprise on mm -hmm. Great Gildersleeve with little Dottie, the next-door neighbor, and, and then, um, others, then the other things were just any time they wanted mm -hmm. it, any odds and ends of... Voices. And occasionally you'd come in on uh, on uh, Armis Brooks and with the yeah, Dennis Day uh, and some yeah. of those. You had a really nice career with uh, with all of this. Yeah. Miss mm -hmm. um, um, Brooks, I was fortunate enough to do the uh, television show too mm -hmm. with her. I played Gail Gordon's wife on that for a while. That's that's that, I'm uh -huh. telling you that's right. Yeah, that's You're right. reminding that's me. Right. That's correct. Yeah. yeah that's right. That. Yes. Yeah. Well. What other things did you do in TV? You must have had a. I easy did uh, some Lucy shows, mm -hmm. and I did a lot of Ozzie and Harriet shows, mm -hmm. and I uh, did the uh, Robert Cummings show, and I did uh, Perry Mason shows, and uh, uh, oh dear, I can't remember. Just quite a, well, quite a lot. Certainly did, a, did lot. an awful lot. You made an easy transition then from mm -hmm. radio to television. Mm -hmm. Yet they didn't they didn't choose you for the TV Riley. No, broadcast. no, that, nobody, not it's even, not, not even John Brown. Yeah, that's interesting. They was Marjorie Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. Well, you first know, it was totally different yeah. type, and uh, they made a regular. Well, it, it lasted a long time. They like didn't TV. think at that time that anybody who was just in radio mm -hmm. uh, would be able to act in front of a camera. Yeah, well, that's like Fibber McGee and Molly. They 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 went in with two other yeah, people. I know, and how I would know. how could anybody be? Anybody but the Fibber and Molly, Jim and Mary and Jordan, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Did you do any movie work? No. Well, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Nothing very startling. Mm -hmm. I did uh, a couple of shows for with Irving Brecker, but little, tiny little things. Mm -hmm. I never did any really film, major mm -hmm. film work. Mm -hmm. How about commercials? Did you do... Uh, yeah, I did quite a lot of commercials. Did you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For various sponsors yes. and products? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm not... You know, I'm never a spokeswoman, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I did, yeah, I did quite a lot of commercials because after I uh, I uh, was with Jack Wormser Agency for quite a while, I did a lot of quite a lot of mm -hmm. commercials. What was your best time? Was the best oh, the time best time was mm -hmm. uh, was the early time. The best time was uh, was when I was doing uh, Riley and mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, Big Town and mm -hmm. Silver Theater and Lux. Those were awfully good days. Worked with Eddie Cantor a lot. Oh, you know, yeah. He was an awfully nice man. Very, very good to us. And working with all the wonderful, wonderful movie stars. You know, work with Cary Grant and Fred <laughs> Astaire and John Barrymore. Oh, gee. Doing parts, you know, opposite and Clark Gable. And that was nice yeah. because <clears throat> these people, in many cases, were were not as accustomed to the microphone as you had said as yeah. you were. So you must have felt that extra confidence in there to. Yes, to we perform. did. We did mm -hmm. feel quite confident. Mm -hmm. We felt that we were, I would say, maybe in some time, slightly superior. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we really no. We did have uh, great confidence mm -hmm. in our because we started and we learned our craft, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. was we did feel confidence. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't mean that we ever showed that in front of stars, for heaven's sake. But, well, uh, you were there to do the job that you were supposed right. to do, and you, you and some well, of the we others felt, did Well, yes, we well. felt very secure, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. 
But it was a wonderful time to be able to meet all those people. Work with Al Jolson, for instance. Mm-hmm. I did his show for quite a long time. Very interesting. Which, which I would never in a million years yeah. have had the chance of meeting him. You know. <laughs> which series was that that Jolson was at the His show? show. He had his own show out yeah, here with sh- Martha Ray. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he had always had a little dramatic interlude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did that, those parts regularly. Either with him or that was one I did a I did a scene with John Barrymore. Uh, <laughs> well, you've had some nice uh, nice memories from yes, all this wonderful time. worked oh with Lux mm-hmm. worked with Paul Muni. I talk mm-hmm. about an actor. There mm-hmm. was a genius. You've Wonder contributed that. a lot to mm-hmm. uh, what we call the golden days of radio. Well. They were very good to me, mm-hmm. and um, I hope I did in this way, and along with some of the other people that I remember so fondly. Doing. Well, you and those days of radio were good to the listeners, too. Mm-hmm. And so on their behalf, and I'm one of them, I thank you. Well, that's very kind done, of you. you know. I appreciate that, and mm-hmm. um, I hope we all earned it. I know that we all have wonderful memories well, of those you days. Did. And those sounds that you created in so many instances, they still live, and they're still as as fresh and as entertaining as they ever were. So I thank you, Paula Winslow, for well, inviting thank us in you. To, uh, to reminisce a little bit. Well, I'm delighted that you came, and it's been a great pleasure. Thank you very much.